You write all these movies on a on a on paper and pen, right? Yeah, boy. And and when you do that, you never say to yourself, "Hey, you know what? Fuck it. I'm going to go to the computer. It's so much easier." Well, I eventually go to the computer after I've finished my first draft. How does it work? In other words, you get an idea. Hateful Eight, you were mm -hmm. like kind of, you love Bonanza, you love the old Western. Oh, you heard of that stuff. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, true. Yeah. You love all that yeah, shit. Yeah, yeah. Right? And then you're sitting there, you're taking a shower, you know, or you're sitting by the pool. You mm -hmm. say you write your movies. Sometimes you're just mm -hmm. kind of chilling out. There always is the inciting idea that gets me to actually sit down at the desk and, and, and take a bunch of blank pieces of paper and start writing from, right. from scratch. Well, here was the idea, was the fact that in the last few years, I've, I have a real big TV collection. I've been uh, taping random episodes off of television that I like. What are you watching? Uh, well, just I'm in particular older shows. Right. And so the thing about it is when I'd watch a Virginian or a Bonanza or a High Chaparral or whatever the deal is, I in particularly focus on the episodes that have like really cool guest stars. Yes. On those episodes. Those are good. You know, like a Robert Culp or a James <laughs> Park, uh, a Michael Parks yeah. or a, a James Coburn or Vic Morrow. People yeah, they like show that. up for an episode. Or yeah, two. exactly. Right. Yeah. Now, and I noticed pretty quickly that if Robert Culp was uh, uh, the guest star on a uh, Virginian. The story wasn't about Trampas, right. uh, Doug McClure. It was about right. Robert Culp. Right. It was his story. Yes. And in almost all these cases, there's always a stranger that comes into the situation. Uh, you don't quite mysterious. Know, yeah, mysterious. You don't quite know what's going on. Right. At some point, a, 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 a dark, complicated past Emerges. Is yeah, is revealed about the character. <laughs> You're right. And you don't know if it's true or not. It's a thing that kind of hangs over the character's head. And you actually almost have to watch the entire episode to see if the guy is a good guy or, or a, a bad, bad guy. You know what? Yes. You're like a goddamn professor. Mm -hmm. You're absolutely right. Do you every episode that I ever liked, every episode I ever liked of any of this thing, hold on, every episode I ever liked of these things. Uh -huh. It's always some fucking asshole. Even Andy and Mayberry, <laughs> some douchebag would come. Who is that guy? Some guy would yeah. come into town. Yeah, yeah. And no one knows what. And, and I remember even on Andy and Mayberry. Yeah, yeah. Barney was freaking out over some guy because he thought he was up to some weird shit. Uh, he was a bank robber. <laughs> yeah, yeah, guy, yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? It was like there's always something weird. Yeah. So you said to yourself, yeah. I'm going to make a movie where some asshole comes in from out of town. Well, no, the idea, though, was the, was the idea, okay, let me do a movie that's stars nothing but those guys. There's no Little ah. Joe. Oh. There's no Trampus, Doug McClure. There's no James Arnett. You mean it's a room full of guys that nobody who are knows. all mysterious dudes. All mysterious, <laughs> all nefarious. You can't quite trust anything right. they say, per se. You have to watch the whole thing to find out what's going on. But there's no hero. There's no moral center. I love that. <laughs>